Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know you're all pushed for time, I, so I did have a presentation, but I'll kind of skip through it quickly. One of the reasons I'm here today is um, I practice no-till farming, which is basically not ploughing. Now, people call glyphosate a chemical plough, but nature never ploughed. It didn't disturb the soil. Things died off and new things grew. So th this, this photograph here shows if we, if we ploughed our soil over winter with the rain and, the, and everything, it would um, wash and just be a sad state. Obviously, no birds or nature can, can live in that. But if you look at the photograph above, that, that is what we can do with glyphosate. We can go into the old crop, we can desiccate it, we can grow a cover crop after harvest and desiccate that off with glyphosate and then drill a new crop straight into it. So we're preserving all the habitats for all the insects and all the birds and ground nesting birds and different things and more importantly the earthworms. The, um, some studies have shown that there's actually 53% more earthworms in no-till soil but no-till is only really possible through, through glyphosate. It also stops um, soil erosion as well. I mean, this, this picture demonstrates what can happen if you get heavy rain coming off um, tilled agricultural land. It's kind of a powerful image, really. Uh, the, the loss of glyphosate just to the UK would be the equivalent of putting an extra two and a half million cars on the UK roads just through extra horsepower and diesel that we need to control invasive weeds and different things. Let's see what the slide is there. This is some soil that's, that's not had a cover crop on it, as you can see it's very sad. This is actually on our own farm. This is the sunflowers that we grow on the farm um, that are just absolutely full of, of bees and pollinators. This was a video but I can't really get it to play on here but as you can see I mean just, just one plant there has got four honey bees on it already. It, it, this is the real truth of, of, of glyphosate. It's you know it's basically made up of salts. There's a, it's not harmful at all. A lot a lot of people want to ban glyphosate because they feel that it uh, will keep GM crops out of Europe. And I, myself, we, we don't grow GM. We don't and we're not allowed to in Europe. But I can't see a problem with it at all. I mean the, the guy you know he's growing his cotton. It's, it's you know it's provided his children with an education. The there is. Some, some really good benefits I would I would say through through using it. You know, we could use less pesticides. I'm not a slave to them at all. The um I've lost my train of thought now where I was going there. I've rambled, haven't I? No no you're <laughs> making a lot of good points, don't worry. Yeah yeah no well I, like I said just got up in here. Oh there you go. You know nature didn't plough so why should we? Everyone seems to think that, you know Scrap the chemicals, plough the fields. It, it, it's not, it's not how nature works. So, did did you start uh, no tilling after you started using glyphosate, or did you already? Try we, we've you've probably used glyphosate on the farm for forty years, but it's 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 allowed us to you know with, with no ill effects, if, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's it's what makes no till possible. It's it's kind of an artificial summer, <coughs> so people won't feed it three hundred and sixty five days a year with whatever crops there are, you know. Since the 1970s, the population has nearly doubled. So to say, oh, well, let, let's scrap glyphosate, you know, we'll, we'll see massive increases, decreases in yields. Lots of land won't be productive. Who's going to feed the world? You know, are we going to cut forests down to find more productive land because we've got marginal land that we've had to take out? I mean, if it was banned, land prices would rocket, food would rocket. I mean, 2007, Russia had a bit of a drought and was a 10% shortage of wheat and the price doubled. Without glyphosate, you know, you're talking 25% probably loss of yield throughout the world. It, it's, it's massive. Would you be concerned that if, if glyphosate is the main sort of product to, to do this, to the, the desiccation and no-tilling, no that too many farmers eventually start using glyphosate, and that it becomes sort of a, a yeah a, a problem just because everyone is using it, so that uh, all the pests start getting resistant to it and super weeds. It, well, a lot of farmers near me plough, but they all glyphosate the fields before they plough because it's the only thing that kills the roots on plants. I mean, Japanese knotweed, I don't know whether you have it in this part of Europe, but I mean, it's quite evasive and it's the only thing that can treat it in the UK. So.
you, you made the statement that you cannot do tillage without glyphosate, and yet there are farmers. All no, no, no. We, we can do tillage without glyphosate, but we can't do zero tillage, which is it's it's, um, it's a form of it's just a phrase, really. Basically, it's it's where you you drill last year's crop, this this year's crop, into last year's crop or a cover crop. So if we want a spring crop, rather than leave the soil bare and let the wind erode it and the right, rain, right. we will grow a cover crop into it. But of course, we can't wait for some of that to ripen before we put the next one in. We use glyphosate to, to, to stop it growing and then we drill the next one into to, it. To, to kill it. Kill, kill, kill the it. cover crop. Right. Kill the cover crop, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll put like an end fixing crop in, something like peas or beans or something, or a mustard that's good for the soil and puts deep roots down. But is that then becoming a nitrogen fertilizer, the peas, and the, or it's just... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fixing nitrogen at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any other questions? Because I know we can't well, and, and the success of it, um, everyone's using it. I mean, if, you, if everyone's using it, it might be... It's poison, right? So it kills the crops. So if everyone's using it, yeah. might not be too much of it. Shouldn't you have, like, different poisons in different places? Well, we, we don't just use glyphosate, we use other ah. herbicides as well, but glyphosate's the safest, that's why it's the most common. Why used is it the safest? Well, because you can drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you can? Well, it's the only it's thing I put in the spray without <laughs> you wearing gloves. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm only 35, but I've been around glyphosate for probably near 20 years now, and I, there's no ill effects. You know, it, it, the, the human body can't actually absorb it. I mean, they're like, oh, so many MEPs, urine's got glyphosate in it. Well, yeah, it's because it goes straight through. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't affect humans. You know, they, they fail to tell you that there's 30 times more arsenic in your urine, which you know is fatal. You know, it, it's it's all perspectives and, and risk. Sure. You know, I mean that train track. If I stood on coffee, it's 30 times more toxic. I mean, everyone's Cheers. got hung up on this this IR phrase of um, a probable carcinogenic. I mean, so's the smell of a new car, so's getting your hair cut, so's carrying a plastic bag. It, you know, it's just, just skirm under it. <laughs> and you also mentioned that you don't buy off of Monsanto and that everyone hates Monsanto. How, how well, do you everyone feel around it? this kind of city at the moment hates Monsanto. Yeah. We, we don't, <laughs> I'd buy off them if they were the but cheapest, but because glyphosate is off patent, it's been around that long, anyone can make it. So, you know, I'll be buying off someone from the UK or someone from Europe that's making it. Uh, it's not. It's not like we're all like a slave to them. I mean, the UK Monsanto doesn't really have a big coverage at all. Syngenta, Bayer, BASF—they're probably the bigger companies within the UK.